so pretty pitiful in how much food it takes to feed Travis. Oh man, <laughs> feeling pretty hungry this week. Okay, we got I think we got a month's worth of food there for five days of hunting. Hopefully it only takes one and we get to bring a lot of this home. That's the great thing about food, you can just take it home with you. Well, Tom and I are heading out on another adventure. It is October 11th today. We're getting a little late in the season for heading out on an archery hunt, but uh, we've hunted hunted pretty hard in Idaho for uh, elk, and we've had more run-ins with wolves than we have elk. So I drew a I drew a special tag over here on the eastern side of Montana, and so we've got a long road trip ahead of us. But we're looking forward to some open country and good elk numbers and very low if any wolf numbers so should be a good trip great adventure and you know it's a lot of big country that's landlocked uh, by private but over the last couple of years we've got some contacts over there so we've got access to get into the into the country we want to hunt so should be a good trip stay tuned getting up to where we're going to camp here We're at camp. This is very luxurious compared to a tent. Home sweet home right here. This is not what we are used to, but I am thankful for a warm wood stove and an old homestead cabin that we're staying in tonight. This is pretty awesome. We've uh, made some more contacts. Over here, we hunted around here a couple years ago and there was a lot of bulls screaming down on a different piece of property and up on the Forest Service and uh, we contacted that that rancher and we got access into this place and we got access in between. There's probably, there's miles of country up here up, that backs up against Forest Service and there's um, company ground down below us and state ground. So we've got, we've got a lot of access. We've got tons and tons of acres of access. And uh, this is kind of a landlocked mountain behind us where these elk kind of pull up in the timber to bed down and pull down in the evenings. So the game plan is just going to be to try and cut them off in between. Um, we weren't hoping or we weren't planning on this snow. We've got like eight inches of snow out there. So a lot of times they're, they're way up on the mountain here, but this snow's got them pulled down. Um, we actually saw a fair amount of elk driving in the dark just trying to get back into here where we're going to camp so super excited this is way different for us to be staying in a cabin those of you who have been following us on youtube you know that we get out there and get after it sometimes 20 miles back with horses and mules and seeing very little elk so we are excited to have just a little change of pace it's always good to mix it up and there's supposed to be a lot of elk in this country should be besides super cold a fairly comfortable hunt. At least we can come and dry our stuff off by a wood stove. So. You can see them. We're trying to figure out which way they're going. It doesn't seem like they're staying on this main trail. Travis, our little scout, I'm staying back. We're trying to figure out where these elk are coming up. So you see that one? Up toward the front of the line, kind of down to the left. Yeah. He's facing up hill, that's big. Yeah, he is. Traff, ready to go after him. Yeah, we're gonna get off this knob. Get down here in the timber, some of the elk are filing down like they might go out the creek bottom.
Day two. Day two of the hunt. Couldn't get up there earlier today. Yesterday we were kind of scouting the way for it to get light daylight so we could see what the country looked like. Today we're gonna get up on top before they start coming up. Try and get it ahead of the herd. There's a herd that So we're going to wait for them in the evening. This herd here, the trust is crossing. Something spoke to us this morning. We were set up right above it. We got up here in the dark, you know, it was looking really good. And I don't know if people came up from the bottom or what, but something spooked the whole herd. And they just took off. We couldn't catch them. But we're actually in a good spot because half the herd's there. They're calling back to this herd. These ones want to come. But something spooked these ones back in the middle, so I don't know what's going to happen. We're hoping that these ones are going to get brave and come on the same trail. And we'll go get it sit on that trail. Although this is a nice bowl, Trav's looking for something just a little bit bigger. Didn't happen. Close, just getting closer every day. Those two bulls were fighting. Probably the mistake I made was not running right after the bulls. I was trying to. I was kind of confused at Trav. I thought he would just run right in and get an arrow, but he ran down to where his cows were. Which, thought, which either way would have been a good work. Would have worked, but I thought that was going to work. But the small bull ended up winning, and so the small bull came down with the cows at 50 yards, and then the big bull was up at 80. I didn't quite feel comfortable shooting through limbs at 80, so I let it go. But if, if I would have ran right in and then I knew the cows were going to bust hard, but there's a chance there's elk. Those bulls might not have noticed. That's probably what I should have done, but live and learn. Day three. A lot of elk. This crunchy snow, though. Trying to pattern them and trying to get ahead. See what happens. Where are they going to come to? This is something that big old monster decides to take this trail. There's like two pretty good sized beat up trails here. Maybe a sweet one if they took that. Okay, 
that's the one. Anyway, the plan is I'm gonna stay here in the timber. The elk are bedded right here, just where we're at right now. Tom's gonna go around the back side where they can't see him, wrap around below. Just nonchalantly walk away from him. We don't wanna push him hard, hoping to get the elk up and wrap around in the timber. Right below me here where I got good shooting lines, where I can go up or down if needed. That's the plan. And then if we have them in the timber, every day at three o'clock, the elk has been coming out to me because it's been cold out. So we gotta get them in the timber. We have two chances of them compared to none. Our plan this afternoon failed, so we're back on another one. Just a, just another attempt. Part 2 will be posted next week. Stay tuned.